I'm joined here today by the one and only Channing Wahlberg himself. I'm of course talking about Billy Quarantillo, set to make his UFC debut here soon against Chris Fishgold. Thanks so much for joining me, man. How are you? Good, man. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you uh, pronouncing my name the right way. It sounds perfect. Oh, really? Uh, I was a little bit nervous about it. What, is it good? Yeah, Billy Quarantillo. That's why I go by Billy Q, because it's kind of a pain to say. So Billy Q, Billy Quarantillo, Billy Q MMA, it's all good. So how do people normally pronounce it when it's incorrect? I mean, uh, I assume you, you must hear all sorts of stuff. Yeah, and um, it's, it was like kind of a running joke for a while. When I was an amateur, I would we, we would go all over Florida, and they would think I was like uh, they would think I had like a Hispanic last name. Oh yeah. And they would say Bill, Billy Corintio. Oh yeah. <laughs> and uh, they kind of put an e in the end, so like Billy Corintio, and it's kept Corintello, but it's all good. It's an Italian last name, but you know they a lot of people think it's Hispanic. For sure. Well, we got that cleared up, got the pronunciation, everything's good. Before we talk about this UFC debut, I mentioned it earlier, the Channing Wahlberg. That's actually where I found out about you from The Ultimate Fighter. And I do want to talk about that because that, that's one of the things I remember most from the show. Uh, what happened sort of with that paperwork? Did you fill out a paperwork saying that you look like a mix of uh, Channing Tatum and Mark Wahlberg? Where exactly did that come from? All right, so the story behind that is it was in 2015, so I was 26. Um, I go out to The Ultimate Fighter tryout. And you know, I was I was hoping to get on. I was six and one. Um, I was six and one as a as a pro fighter, coming off a couple of big wins. And so I go out there, and I end up getting through like the first few like tryouts. You know, like the first couple of things. I had us like hitting mitts and grappling, and doing all that kind of stuff. So after I made it through the first part, me and my brothers and one of my teammates, Troy, we all went out and partied that night. And the Ultimate Fighter, like the UFC people, gave us a huge stack of paperwork. And the paperwork was like all these questions <laughs> and all this other stuff. And when I was filling it out, it asked me like, long story short, we were out partying all night. Um, and they asked a question about, um, you know, like what's something like remarkable about you or like something different. Um, and it was kind of just a joke. I was like, yeah, people say I look like uh, Channing Tatum and uh, Mark Wahlberg mixed together. You know, it was kind of just like <laughs> a joke. That was in a, in, a, in a stack of paper that was, like, huge. It was, like, this big stack. And that was something that uh, they must have, like, wrote down for, like, the fight, the uh, the coaches, Uriah Faber and Conor McGregor to talk about. And sure enough, Faber brought it up in front of Dana White, and they started, like, <laughs> joking about it. Um, and then they started rooting for me, and they're like, let's go Channing Wahlberg. Um, let's go Channing Wahlberg. And at the end, they're like, Channing Wahlberg gets it done. So it was just, <laughs> like, kind of a – Kind of a, it's just interesting how things happen like that. Like um, just writing that down made them talk about it, and uh, um, it was a good time. Have you heard stuff from? Uh, have people mentioned it since the show? Because I feel like that was kind of a big talking point about you. Was the moment uh, Uriah Faber kind of uh, pointed that out and started talking about it? Yeah. Uh, have, have I talked to people about what that uh, that nickname? Or well, do the, well the do people do people talk to you about that nickname still? Yeah, yeah, they joke about it at the Contender Series. They brought it up. Um, Laura Sanko actually mentioned it to me before the fight. She's like, oh, Channing Wahlberg uh, 2.0 is coming back. <laughs> um, so it was funny. It still gets around, and um, it's a good way uh, for people to remember me from the Ultimate Fighter. You know, I feel like I'm, you know, I don't feel like a rookie still. I feel like I've been here before, even though it's my first UFC fight. Um, but it's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a funny thing, and, uh, but, you know, they're going to remember me for my fighting when it's all said and done. Uh, for sure, and uh, kind of the last sort of thing about the show, how do you look back at that experience? Because it was a unique one. I mean, Conor McGregor at the time, he, he wasn't quite as big as he is now, but it was definitely a unique experience. Yep. How do you look back at that whole experience? Oh, yeah, it was amazing. I look back, and um, I, I think uh, it, it would be good for every MMA fighter if they get the opportunity to get up, to go on the Ultimate Fighter because, you know, when you're there, it's, it, it's stressful, and you're going through all these emotions, but... You're also training with some of the best fighters in the world. You know, Team Alpha Male, Uriah Faber. You know, these guys are legends. You know, I grew up watching Uriah Faber in the WEC, you know, and, and all and all of his teammates. You know, there's so many guys in Team Alpha Male that are at a high level. You know, Cody Garbrandt, TJ Dillashaw, all of them were there. So it was such a good experience. And being with Connor before, you know, he got, you know, before, before the Floyd Mayweather fight, it was actually right before the Jose Aldo fight. And... You know, I think he, he seemed more hungry then than he does now. You know, he was so, like, intense and, like, in your face and train, 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 and, and had that, you know, intensity that, um, you know, that he kind of lost a little bit after the, I think after the Floyd Mayweather fight, after he made $100 million, which you can't really blame him.
And I mean, uh, would you say that he's the same off camera as he is on camera? Because obviously, a lot of people on camera, we kind of see like this character that he plays and stuff. Was he different when uh, he was off screen? No, and that's funny. It's funny. That's the uh, the number one question I got right after the, yeah. the show. They're like, is Conor McGregor really like that? And he is, man. He, I mean, the cameras the cameras were even on him the whole time we were there. But they obviously they only show you know one percent or two percent of what actually happens there. Because you know, because it's. 24 7 the whole time you're there they're videotaping you so yeah he was he's a maniac the whole time every time he enters the room he would just start talking shit to uh to, to team alpha male and uriah faber and they would go back and forth and sometimes it would be really playful and sometimes it'd be pretty intense um you know they were like they had the, they're pushing matches and, and, and it got pretty uh, intense sometimes but uh you know i enjoyed it you know we're in the fight game we're a bunch of fighters you know a bunch of alpha males talking shit to each other i, I like it and so uh, the, the thing is, we see the fighters that go on to the UFC after the show, but we don't really hear about the fighters after the show. What kind of happens to you afterwards? I mean, it's difficult to get back in a promotion. Is the UFC kind of stopping you from signing with someone right away? What kind of happens after you're done with the Ultimate Fighter? Yeah, they, um, yeah, it was a tough time because, you know, right after the show, like, I knew I lost to Saul in, you know, the, the, the second round or, you know, the, the fight, the next fight after getting in the house. So, um, you know, I was hoping I would still get a chance, you know, back then. But in hindsight, it, it was good that I had to I had to wait a little bit. I had to win a few more fights. I had to get better. I had to hone my skills um, because I didn't want to just sneak in the UFC. I wanted to get in, um, you know, on, on a big winning streak, ready, ready to beat these guys, and, and, you know, knowing that I could beat all these guys. So, yeah, after it wasn't really that, that hard for me to find other fights because um, I, I have a pretty decent fan base, uh, a, a fan base that comes out for my fights um, in, in Buffalo, in Western New York, in, in Washington, D.C., which obviously I get to fight again there, which is incredible. And then of course in Tampa where I live. So I was able to fight in, uh, in all three cities um, and sell a lot of tickets. I, I was the main event at every fight I was on from, from the ultimate fighter to the contender series. I was the main event every fight. And um, you know, I handled business and, and you know, finished a lot of people to get back to where I am now. And, and now I'm, I know I'm ready for this UFC chance now, but I didn't really know back then. And so did you think the UFC, once the show was over, did you think that was kind of done with the UFC? I mean, uh, or, or did you think maybe there'd be an opportunity like the Contender Series uh, where you could potentially come back? Um, yeah, I, I still, I, I never gave up that dream. You know, I, I moved down from Buffalo to Tampa in 2010 to chase this dream to get the UFC. So even after the Ultimate Fighter, I didn't give up on it. I, I always told myself, all right, you're going to get in the UFC. You're going to get, you know, you're going to reach that peak, that, you know, that pinnacle. But at the end of the day, I still love fighting anyway. You know what I mean? I still wanted to fight. Um, there's still a lot of a lot of people I want to fight out there. There's still a lot of MMA fights I have left in me. And I also would, would love to do boxing matches. I would love to do a Muay Thai fight in Thailand. That's something that's on like my bucket list um, that I've that I've wanted to do for a long time. So uh, it, it was a pretty easy decision to keep fighting. And uh, I knew I could beat a bunch of these regional guys. I knew, uh, you know, Saul Rogers was a really tough matchup to, for anyone, but especially on one day notice. Or, you know, or like two days notice, not with not with my training camp, not with my, you know, you need a whole training camp to fight some of these guys. So, you know, I'll be ready for this. This is what the ultimate fighter would have looked like if I had my whole training camp and I had my coaches with me. And so what was your reaction when you got the call for the Contender Series? I assume maybe your coach or your manager kind of came to you and told you about it. What was the first thing that went through your mind when you found out about uh, you'd be on the show? Yeah, I thought I'm, I'm back, baby. I'm like, they got me another chance and uh, I'm not going to blow it this time. Uh, you know, and I, and I was ready to keep beating people. I, you know, regional fights, contender series fights, you know, other promotions, whoever wanted it. I was on, a, you know, I was, I tore my ACL uh, a year and a half ago or, you know, two years ago now, um, almost, almost two years ago, I tore my ACL and I, I was so motivated to come back and prove everyone that I was going to be better than I was before. And uh, so if it was the contender series then, or if I had to keep beating people, I feel like I was just going to keep finishing people and knocking people out, submitting people um, until I got this opportunity. And now it's, you know, now I get that opportunity against the best in the world. And so with the Contender Series, we know that you have to, one of the tough, toughest job interviews in the world, but one of the worst parts is waiting to find out if you got the contract. What was that wait like for you finding out whether you'd be back in the UFC or not? Yeah, that was, uh, uh, it, it was, you know, I had mixed emotions about it. I was, I, I felt like I had a really good uh, reaction, you know, like it, a lot of that's based on like the reaction of Dana and like the crowd and, you know, even people I didn't know were clapping and going crazy. And 
I think that's what they're looking for. You know, uh, they're looking for emotion. You know, whether it's a crazy big knockout that gets everyone going, or it's like a war, like a back and forth fight that we had. You know, where he started off strong and then I came back in the second and, and you know finished him in the third. Um, I knew it was an emotional fight, and everyone, you know, everyone is hyped up about it. So I, I, I felt pretty comfortable with it. Um, but of course, you know, you, you never know. So yeah, they say the contender series, the hardest job interview, but I think the Ultimate Fighter is, you know, even harder because you're in a in a tournament. You got to win a few fights, and you don't get your coaches, and you're stuck in that house the whole time. And it's the Ultimate Fighter is way, uh, way harder than the contender series. I'm sure I do agree with that because they, they take away the phones and everything. How do you sort of deal with that experience mentally? Does it change you when you leave the show? I mean, just not having your phone, not having a TV, and just really focusing on fighting constantly. Yeah, well, you're focused on fighting constantly, but you you really think about a lot of stuff. You know, um, you know, we don't realize how often we get interrupted on our phone. You know, I know me personally. I'm talking to promoters. I'm talking to managers. I'm talking to all these guys. Um, because I help out my I, I help out my younger fighters to get fights, you know, my amateur fighters, um, and other guys like that. Um, and then I also coach classes, and then I also gotta you know handle emails for the, for, with the UFC and USADA and all this other stuff. And, and you know you're you're constantly you know getting pulled in all these different directions. So it was really it it, it was kind of weird at, at first. You know you didn't you don't like it at all because you can't talk to anyone. But then there's also like a freeing feeling that you know you can't do anything about it anyway. So you just enjoy, you know, not being interrupted and you have a lot of conversations with yourself. And of course, all like, you know, you're just with a bunch of fighters all day. So you guys all kind of pick each other's brains. And uh, it's, it's a very, uh, you know, it's a very surreal feeling, you know, being there for that long without, without your phone, without connection to the outside world. And so you are going to be making your UFC debut, obviously, against Chris Fishgold. It's a pretty big fight to get your career started off with in the UFC. Uh, what are your thoughts on your opponent, man, as you head into this fight? Yeah, I love it. I love the matchup. They messaged me, Chris Fishgold, and I, I remember seeing him because I follow Cage Warriors. Yeah. Um, uh, I, I thought he could have potentially been, a, been an opponent. Uh, a couple of years ago, I was thinking about going over there and fighting, um, but it just didn't work out. I, I had a, di a better deal with, with someone else here in America, but... Um, yeah, I was. I, I kind of knew who he was. I, I've seen a few of his highlights from Cage Warriors, but then I had to watch some of his UFC fights. And I know he's a beast, man. Um, you know, you, you can't take that away from him. But I have a lot of momentum going into this fight. I've been taking people out. Um, not only taking people out, but taking people out with a very similar style to his. You know, very very good grappler. Throws throws a lot of hard strikes. Um, you know, most likely has a good gas tank. You know, we'll compare it to mine. Come, you know, starts off that first round trying to knock your head off, trying to take you out. Um, and, and that's what I'm trying to do too. I'm trying to take him out in the first round, uh, make a statement, you know, in DC where it's it's kind of like my second home. Um, you know, I have uh, two of my brothers and my sister all live there, so I have a ton of family in that area. Um, it's gonna be, I think it's gonna be a very pro America, very pro Billy Q crowd, and uh, we're we're gonna get people excited. We're gonna get people on their feet, and uh, we're both gonna go for that that kill, and uh, you know, let the better man win. And I'm sure with you watching a lot of his fights, you've sort of been thinking about the matchup, coming up with stuff with your coaches as well. What do you sort of think about the matchup? I assume you find this uh, something that kind of favors you. Yeah, I think, I mean, you know, hopefully every fight, you know, I feel that way. I'm always like, all right, well, this dude can get it, you know. And, uh, and um, yeah, so he, he's very similar to my last opponent. You know, he's a very, he's a, he's a very good black belt. He's very good at jiu-jitsu. Um, you, you know, we know that's where he wants to go. As, as much as these guys say, oh, I want to strike with him, I want to strike with him, they're, they're black belts for a reason, and time and time again, they, they shoot in right away. So, you know, I'll, I, I know he'll want to grapple with me. My grappling's pretty strong. I train under Matt Arroyo, who is a beast, just, in my opinion, one of the best grapplers in the world. Um, day in and day out at Grace Camp, a solid I'm rolling with black belts every single day. You know, we're punching each other. We're trying to choke each other. Uh, you know, we're fighting. So, um, yeah, I'm ready for that. I'm ready for that, that grappling. And if he does want to stand with me, by all means, let's, you know, let's stand and bang and, and put on a show. And uh, the big things when guys make their UFC debuts, of course, the famous octagon jitters. Is that something that you've thought about at all? Or do you feel like you've experienced so much UFC stuff without being in the UFC that it's probably not going to affect you? Yeah, you know, you never know if it's going to affect you or not. Um, but I, I believe in... in basically what Dominic Cruz says, uh, you know, I don't want to steal from him. I want to uh, quote him on that. Uh, when he talks about uh, UFC jitters and ring rust, it's all mental. You know, if you tell yourself, um, it's my UFC debut, I'm going to be nervous. Um, then, 
you know, then you might hype yourself up and be nervous. But I've fought, you know, I've had over 28 fights. I've probably had over 50 fights counting, you know, little street fights when I was younger and, you know, fights in the gym and, you know, boxing matches that we had in our backyard as a kid. Um, so it's just another fight for me. He's tough. It's cool that uh, I got someone flying across the world uh, to come and fight me in D.C. Um, and, you know, he's got a killer record. He's 18-3. and three. I think I'm hoping we're going to be on, you know, right in the middle of the prelims, maybe the top of the prelims. Um, I would love to be on the the main card, but you know I gotta I gotta you know earn my stripes first with this promotion, and uh, you know I'm ready to, to put on a show. All right, and I just have one more for you. I mean, uh, I'm sure you see yourself winning, but how do you get your hand raised in your UFC debut? Um, I, I think I'm gonna I think I'm gonna outstrike him. I think uh, my volume punching, I'm gonna be able to to you know outstrike him, land that big punch, whether it's you know a hundred little punches where I just tag him up. Or, uh, you know, I find that if, if he gets over, uh, you know, if he gets over aggressive and I land that big punch, um, you know, I can see I can see myself knocking him out. I can also see us getting in a lot of scrambles if he wants to grapple. You know, I can see myself, um, you know, catching him in a submission or even getting on top and, and ground and pound. But either way, it's going to be a lot of pressure. Um, you know, you can't blink on a Billy Key fight. I'm coming out there to, to take him out, and uh, that's what I see happening. All right, well, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a great fight. It's going to be good to see you finally make your UFC debut. Thanks so much for the time, man. I really appreciate it. Lucas, thanks, man. Anytime for you.